always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. guys and welcome to gsmc entertainment podcast brought to you by the gsmc podcast network i'm your host cynthia and happy monday everyone it's been a minute since i've talked to y'all how have you been what you guys up to i have been up to really nothing same old shame old you know another day another dollar hustle and bustling um, been chill, you know, still dealing with the COVID pandemic and I don't know. I've just been vibing really. Can't you guys tell by the tone of my voice? I'm literally just straight chilling, straight vibes over here. Um, I bought a weighted blanket. My mom bought me a weighted blanket over the weekend. So that's as exciting as things got for me because, you know, I've been dealing with some anxiety stuff. Nothing new, nothing cool, but it is what it is. And I tried out a weighted blanket for the first time last night. And I slept like a freaking baby. I haven't slept like that in a minute. I've been having particularly restless nights over the last four or five days because of that seven-year deadline. We basically have until the earth shatters into pieces and climate change irreversible so there's that you know that's always on my mind and yeah, that's basically it i know i'm dumping a lot of info on you guys you're all probably sitting there like what the heck this is not the typical sin that we usually listen to and it's not it's not because i'm not the same person i was two weeks ago when i talked to you guys i'm not even the same person i was two days ago Two hours ago, even. Because I am constantly evolving and changing. Always. And if you're not, you're going to get left behind. And that's on that. Anyway, let's get into what we're here to talk about. What's the cheese, man? What's the gossip for this week? And I got some for you guys. So this morning, I logged onto Twitter. And I saw Salt Bay was trending. I saw Dubai was trending. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Why is Salt Bay trending? Is he seasoning human flesh? Like, what is it? You know, like, why is he trending? And for one, there's a couple things. So if you guys haven't seen, it's been going viral. This video with a lot happening, honestly, it's basically a girl twerking in salt bay's restaurant and he's there you know smiling recording her and then this man who supposedly is her brother comes in knocking on the door the window hella hard talking about like what are you doing yada 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 like what what are you what is you doing like hella yelling at the girl like, there was just a lot going on in this, like, 10-second clip. Like, a girl twerking, Salt Bay's there, an angry man's bumping, and, like, her face. Like, it's kind of funny. Actually, it's pretty funny. Like, what in the world? And, like, the way she skittles out of there, like, oop. That wasn't me just throwing it back a few seconds ago. So, at first, people were very concerned because they thought... That the man who was knocking on the window was exuding really aggressive behavior towards the girl because he comes in there, you know, hella like banging on the door, the window, and he immediately comes in like yelling at her. But then it turns out, uh, supposedly, this girl who was throwing it back in Salt Bay's restaurant, she's underage. She's underage. And the guy who was knocking hella crazy at the window is her brother. Yes, her brother. So in that context, I understand 
why he would act that way. Why he would be acting so, as people said, aggressively. Why he was so mad. I would be mad too if I saw my underage sister throwing it back in front of two grown men and they're recording her. I would be upset too. I would raise my voice a little bit. A lot of bit. You feel me? So if he's really the brother and if she's really underage, then absolutely. In my opinion, I think he reacted how I feel any older brother would have reacted seeing their little sister in that way. Now, if this was her man and she is of age, then maybe alarming, but I don't know. I think it all really comes down to, is she underage? That's really, in my opinion, the key factor. If she's underage and she's throwing it back in front of grown men who are recording her, yeah, whether that's her man or that's her brother, they, I think they reacted appropriately, if you ask me. If she is of age, she's 18 or older, she's technically, in the eyes of the government, grown. She can do what she wants. She's an adult. She will suffer the consequences of her actions, whatever that may be. And in that context, if that is true, if she is of age, then yes, maybe that brother or man, her man, did act a little bit loud, aggressive. But it's social media. Nothing is real. <laughs> and I say that because I just finished watching the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. Hella people talking about it. A few of my friends were watching it and they're like, sin. You need to watch this. This documentary is going to blow your mind because it's going to expose you. It exposes us to how fake internet is. Social media is not real. Nothing is real from our screens. And I, I'm, I'm going to get into that right now because I'm going to switch gears a little bit. So that is really why Salt Bay is trending. Um, again, from that wild video, like it's just like a lot going on in those 10 seconds, as well as um, his restaurant actually got shut down right after this video went viral because supposedly it is um, breaking COVID restrictions. It's not following COVID restrictions. Again, I say everything's allegedly because I feel like, again, nothing is real anymore in the Internet space. Don't believe everything you read on the Internet, people. Just don't. If you don't understand why I'm saying this, you need to go watch The Social Dilemma because they really get into great detail as to why that is, why you shouldn't believe everything that's on the internet. And just going back, I know I'm kind of jumping back and forth from like The Social Dilemma and Salt Bay, but one quick thing about Salt Bay as to why they're also... Uh, trending or why he's trending is because people are freaking out about the prices on an alleged receipt from Salt Bay's Dubai restaurant. Um, it's shocking people because, but I think it's because people don't realize the prices are in AED, which is in Dubai money instead of US dollars. So in Dubai money, like if you're, du there's like United States, there's Mexico rich. There's United States rich, then there's Dubai rich, right? Dubai rich, if you Dubai rich, you're rich rich, <laughs> okay? Like, in other words, those French fries that would cost you here in the U.S. $11 are going to be $40 in Dubai. Yes, indeed. So in this alleged receipt of Salt Bay in Dubai, um, it was a steak, french fries, a tomato salad, um, a Nusrat baklava, I'm not sure what that is, a Zouk Malbec, again, not sure what that is, sparkling uh, 800, and then a two SGL espresso. So for all of these items, it ended up being $1,695 in Dubai. So in the U.S., that's around 
dollars. Again, I would still never spend that much money on dinner, but compared to Dubai, that's relatively cheaper. I think a dollar in Dubai is 27 cents here. Or if I got that the other way wrong, I don't know. I don't travel much, y'all, so I don't know a lot about money conversion and conversion and all that. I'm not the best at numbers. But anyway, that's going to wrap up the talk on why Salt Bay is trending. We're going to come to a very brief break. And when we come back, I want to discuss about social dilemma. We'll be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to GSMC Entertainment Podcast. And let's just get straight into it. I was already talking about this in the previous segment. I just finished watching the very widely discussed um, Netflix documentary that recently came out titled The Social Dilemma. And it, in a nutshell... If you haven't watched it, go watch it, first of all, because I'm about to spill the beans right now. The Social Dilemma is a group of people who are in the tech industry or who were in the tech industry, and they discuss and analyze how social media is destroying, literally destroying our society And it's kind of scary where we're headed if things don't change. So there was a lot of things that I learned. Like I knew social media can be damaging. It can manipulate us. It can make us feel unworthy. Like there's a lot of con to social media. And prior to me watching this documentary, I would think, oh, But there's also a lot of good things that come out of social media. It's so informative. I can connect with people really fast. I can connect with family members I haven't seen. I can FaceTime somebody. I can, you know, everything's so instant and easy and yada, yada, yada. I was trying to look at all the good things. But after watching this documentary, it makes the cons outweigh the pros, honestly, in my opinion. Like, I feel like after I finished watching this documentary, I wanted to delete my social media apps, but I don't think I'm going to do that because I literally have FOMO and I don't know if that's addiction, to be honest. I feel like we're all a tad bit addicted to our um, tech devices, but I definitely am more vigilant on my screen time. I am or I have turned off my notifications for my app so that like my phone's not constantly dinging me and telling me who liked a photo, who messaged me, who did what. Like, I don't care anymore because nothing on social media is real, okay? And it's really scary because one of the um, tech experts who's trying to spread this awareness of message of what is happening in the tech industry, he says... That fake news on Twitter spreads six times faster than true news because true news is boring. That's scary when you really think about it. 
fake news travels six times faster than true news. So how do we really know where our sources are coming from? If our sources are true and credible? This is why additional research is needed. And what sucks even more about research, even our Google search engines are part of an algorithm. So they talk a lot about the algorithm in this show or in this documentary. They talk about the algorithm. And again, prior to me watching this documentary, when I heard algorithm, I was just only thinking Instagram like, oh, the Instagram, the Instagram algorithm is rigged because they only show posts of people who I interact with a lot or like, you know, they don't show posts in chronological order. That's what I thought. All I thought there was to an algorithm was just like, oh, they show you the most popular posts. They show you posts of businesses who like with big followings. I don't know. That's what I was thinking. But no, algorithms extend way past that. And are deeply rooted every time we log into any social media app, whether that is Twitter, whether that is Instagram, whether that is Facebook, TikTok, there is a specific algorithm. Everything is strategically planned when we scroll on our news feed to sell us something, to advertise something to us, to send us a message about something. It's all a business. It's all about monetization. It's all about making money for these big corporations. It has nothing to do with us. We are just users of these platforms. And something really interesting that they pointed out in this documentary was that there are only two industries in the world that call their customers, in a sense, their customers, or the people involved, users. And that is illicit drugs and social media. Why is that? Because you can be addicted to both. An addiction can evolve from social media. And I feel like we've all been slightly addicted or quite addicted, if you ask me. And it's honestly very informative very scary but the good thing is that these techies say there's a lot that can be done they still believe that society in a sense can be saved there's a lot of things that they think people it's reversible basically it's just about spreading this information raising awareness and just being hyper aware that not Everything that we see on our algorithm, on our social media feed, is strategically planned there for a reason. So we shouldn't believe everything we see. And something really that that got me clicking, something in my mind clicking, was in the documentary, they said that the algorithm tries to suit your, your feed to your needs. So if I click on a link about conspiracy theories my algorithm whether it would is on twitter whether it is on facebook whether it is on instagram my algorithm is going to replicate and show me all of these different conspiracy theory accounts tweets pictures anything And that's going to keep fueling me and feeding my mind and sending me the message like, this is true. Look at all this information. Like, I am right. And that is actually a problem. And they mentioned in a documentary that you should follow people who don't think like you, who don't believe in the same things as you, who have differing points of views than you. So that way you can be exposed to different points of views. And I never thought it like that. I never thought that way. I immediately was like, oh, you think different than me? Out my, out of my face, out of my feed. And I think that's why we have become such an isolated society. We are so isolated. We don't know true human communication. Like, 
we don't know what that is. We don't know how our how to use critical thinking skills anymore. We have our tech devices to do that for us now. There's a lot of things that we lack because of these tech devices. And that is why we have become so isolated because we talk and communicate through our tech devices. Like, think about it. Anywhere you go and you are alone, what's the first thing you do? You grab your phone and look down and start doing whatever it is you do. I'm guilty of that. So I'm not like trying to call any of you out. Like I'm literally guilty of this. So I'm calling myself out because literally this documentary is so eye-opening. And I need all of you who are tuning in right now to watch The Social Dilemma on Netflix because it is truly a call to action of what we need to do and like the habits we need to start forming now to create a better future for us for real like it is it's that serious i i know like when my friends are talking about it and they're like it's that serious like you're gonna want to delete all your social media apps i thought they were exaggerating like girl what are you talking about like how serious can this be like no this is serious because it is literally r- killing people like The suicide rate is at an all-time high right now because of our distorted view of beauty, of what we're constantly being told and fed on social media, of all these filters that lighten your skin and change your features. Like, again, I am guilty of this. Like, sometimes I feel I can't even look at a camera. I don't even want to take a selfie. I don't even want to take a video of myself talking unless I have a filter over my face. Like, I feel prettier with the filter. Let me know in the comments if you feel this way, too. And it sucks because when I was younger, you know, when I was in high school, social media was around, but it didn't really start to get popping until I was in college. So in high school, you know, we still had MySpace. Um, Facebook was really where it was at, like posting your pics. And I was taking all my pictures You know, there was no filters back then. I was taking all my pictures on a digital, a lime green Canon digital point and shoot camera. No filter. I'm there, you know, taking a picture of myself with flash, no edit. And I felt good at the time. So it's like, what changed? Why is my view of perfection and beauty so distorted? Like, Why do I feel the need to strive for perfection now? There are things I used to not be self-conscious about that I'm self-conscious about now because of social media. But again, I have to just remind myself that social media is literally not real. It is a fake world. And that's on that, on the social dilemma. I know I just poured everything into you guys, but for real, go watch it. Highly, highly recommend We're going to cut into a very brief break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about another Netflix show that I just finished binge watching. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. up you guys and welcome back to gsmc health them on this podcast 
So we are now entering the final segment of today's show, and we're talking about another show. I think today's focus is a lot about Netflix shows, basically what I've been watching, and that is Ratched. It is a Netflix show, and I mainly watched it because it looked like a spinoff American Horror Story, and that's because the lead actress in Ratched is Sarah Paulson, and she was in every season of American Horror Story, and she bodied every single season of American Horror Story. Sarah Paulson is such an amazing actress. Her range is exquisite undeniable she can act her freaking butt off and that's what led me to watching ratchet because i'm like anything that this girl's in i'm gonna watch okay because she's just such a great actress and i feel like she typically embodies roles that are like gruesome and twisted and dark and that's kind of how ratchet is too like honestly it's kind of like a spin-off american horror story There are some gory parts of it, but it's not like overly gory gory to the point where you're like, I need to stop watching. It's only certain parts. So the show takes place actually, I knew it took place in Northern California because throughout the episodes, they kept mentioning cities like San Francisco, Modesto, Sacramento, um, Watsonville. All of these areas that are like North Bay or Bay Area, um, coastline, North California. And come to find out, they shot the entire season of Ratched in Big Sur, California, which is absolutely beautiful. It's the majestic California coastline um, of Big Sur. And it's not the first place that comes to mind for the setting of a gruesome show about the underbelly, you know, of a mental asylum. But for Ratched, co-creator and writer Evan Romansky, the postcard worthy roads aren't as serene as they may seem. And here's what... Evan Romansky had to say about his choosing of Big Sur. He said the landscape of Big Sur lends so much to the aesthetic of the show. It was great to be able to foreshadow twists and turns into the plot along with the winding twisting roads of Big Sur. You're transversing these nerve wracking roads around every corner. There's potential danger just like the show. Ratched which rocketed to number one on Netflix the weekend of its release, creates a new backstory for Mildred Ratched, the battle weeks of a mental health worker who lorded over the asylum in the book and subsequent film, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. In the source material, the only biographical detail Romansky had to go on was her history as a military nurse. The blank slate of a character made it an appealing challenge for Romansky, who originally wrote the spec script while in grad school as a means to get an agent. He said, I love the aspect that we didn't really know anything about her other than she was an army nurse. As a writer, that was exciting because I wasn't going to be retelling anything. I could totally create a backstory, he says. The Netflix series envisions Ratched, played by Sarah Paulson, as an imposter expelled from the military. After a dishonorable discharge, she games her way into a job at a mental hospital in order to liberate her brother, who has been locked in the basement following a sadistic multiple homicide. Many more homicides follow by means of both barbaric medical procedures and old-fashioned murder weapons. The natural wonder of California plays a large role in the series. It's just such a beautiful part of the country. We wanted to capitalize on that beauty and really showcase it, says Romansky. It makes a perfect backdrop for the hyper-stylized view of post-World War II aesthetics captured by director Ryan Murphy from American Horror Story. There's a mad menish sense of hot fashion, Nurses are draped in tailored aquamarine outfits, and the eight slim itself looks more like an old Hollywood celebrity retreat rather than a hospital. Filmed at the Arrowhead Springs Hotel in San Bernardino, 
The setting actually served at the site of Elizabeth Taylor's honeymoon with Conrad Hilton Jr. in 1950. Outside of the hospital, the characters spend much of their time at Big Sur fixture Lucia Lodge, which is a quaint collection of 10 cabins built in the 1930s, perched just feet from the ocean. Although the interiors have been renovated, the facades remain largely unchanged. In the show, tense violent and sexual scenes take place inside the cabins, and the picturesque atmosphere makes them feel like a morose fairy tale. The lodge itself is rumored to be haunted, actually, the Lucia Lodge in Big Sur, which is one of the primary filming locations for the Netflix show. So, looks like I won't be visiting there because I don't like visiting places that are haunted. Romanski says, it's crazy it looks fake on the show. Like, it does not look like it could ever be a real motel. It's absolutely stunning. It's probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. It was a perfect, perfect find. The Lusa Lodge in Big Sur has never before hosted a TV crew, since their rustic cottages are typically booked solid and the agreement took months of coordination. In the show... The crotchety proprietor of the hotel rules it with an iron fist, which couldn't be more different from the actual owners. They were 100% opposite of good old Luis on the show, says Romanski. They were the most warm and welcoming people ever. They were really great. I hope people check them out. The shoot, which took place over three or four days in 2019, captured the attention of the small Big Sur community. A fleet of vintage period-specific cars parked out front drew neighborhood kids to the property. While there, they took advantage of snacks from the production company's catering car. It was a nice little treat for the kids. We have a nice little neighborhood of kids and there's not usually too much going on here, laughs Lucia Lodge manager Jesse McKnight, who lives on site actually. The lodge itself has had a rough few years. Between wildfires, landslides, and the coronavirus, it has been forced to close repeatedly and has just now reopened after the most recent fires. On a normal year, we're usually pretty full, but the last four years haven't been normal for us, says McKnight. Currently, there's a surprising amount of availability for the cabins, which range from around $200 to $450, but the show has certainly created an increase in email inquiries. So that is really how all of that boiled down and how they chose Big Sur as a primary filming location for the Netflix show Ratchet. Again, I do recommend, um, I think it definitely leads people to wanting more after each episode like once you're done watching you're like okay what's gonna happen next you know like what next what next so it definitely leaves you wanting more so again those are my two recommendations for this week the social dilemma documentary on netflix and ratchet which is also featured on netflix so you guys that's gonna wrap up today's episode here at the gsmc entertainment podcast I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff because that tremendously helps the show. And I'll catch you guys here next week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.